what is up, what's going on? I'm finally going to be upgrading the head unit stereo in my WRX and I doing Android head unit. This is the nine inch model running Android 8.1, similar to the previous one you saw on my channel that we installed in my friend's WRX, as well as the one that we also installed in the Forester. So without wasting any more time, let's go take a look at what's in the box and then I'll get started with the install. All right, so I don't have that much space up here, but let's open it up. I don't think they could have packaged that any cleaner. You've got your bag with all the wiring harnesses. There's an abundance of them. You won't need all of them. And then the head unit right here. Take off the film. things first we need to remove the OEM head unit um, which is pretty straightforward you're gonna need a pry removal tool of some sort you're gonna start at the top and just wedge this guy in there along kind of the edges and just carefully pull this top piece out there's some wiring connected behind here that you do not want to rip out go ahead and undo these clips and unplug this wiring because we're gonna need to take this unit out so that we can remove these factory vents and transfer them over into the new Android head unit. Okay, so things get a little bit more complicated with the 2016 models. You have to go and remove your glove box, which is pretty straightforward. You just push it in on each side, pull it down, push this little um, piece off, and then the entire thing can come down. Inside there, it's pretty difficult to see. You can kind of see on the left hand side there, there's a hole where there'd be a 10 millimeter bolt that you would go and remove. Now over here on the driver's side, it's actually the same thing. You have to take off this trim piece here, which is pretty straightforward, just undo the screw at the bottom, pull it off. And then it's the same exact thing on this side. There's another 10 mil bolt, you can kind of see it in the middle of the frame there. You need to take that out. Right up top here, another bolt there, and another bolt right there that you need to undo and take those out. Once you've undone all four of those 10 mil bolts, the top ones, one on each side down there, you're just gonna grab the top and firmly pull it outwards. Just like that, you can support it a little bit from the bottom as well. And the whole entire unit should come out like that. And then looking down from the top here, we'll be able to undo these connectors, get everything undone in the back, and then we can pull the whole unit out. And at the very bottom here is the controls for the heating. Undo that, and we got the whole unit out. All right, so now that we've got the factory unit out and the Android unit here, and before we start doing any of the wiring, we need to actually transfer over a few things onto the new setup. So these vents from the factory setup here, we need to use a flathead screwdriver and there's just little clips that we need to undo and pull this out. So there's just basically four tabs, one on each corner that needs to be popped up and it just slides off. You also need to remove these buttons, your hazard button and your enter toggle switch. So on the back here, there's just small tabs on the sides. You might even be able to just pinch them with your fingers. Yep, and then the button comes out and then we'll save this for if we ever want to switch back. All right, so let's check out the fitment. Um, we're gonna put the hazard button in the top first just gonna slide in, perfect. And then the enter button in the bottom. Nice and snug. Then let's go and get the vents fitted into place. The same four clips exist on the new unit. So just slide them into place. Obviously there's only one direction these can go in with the, uh, the slider that adjusts them. 
I know there's lots of discussion online about the fitment of the vents. Really nice fitment. There's no, there's no wiggle room. They're not loose. There's no big gaps around any of the edges. The bottom, the top, that's awesome. Next, we need to take off two things. We need to first take off this metal bracket. You can see here on the sides by unscrewing all the screws around it. And then we need to take out the actual heating controls. So undo these screws here. You can set the factory unit aside again. And then over on the Android unit, we're actually gonna put these heating controls right into position at the bottom. And then using the same screws, secure it into place. Now that we've got everything into position, your unit should look like this. We've got our vents, our buttons, and our heating controls. Now that we've got everything secured and together, we can move on to the wiring side of things. First thing I want to note is up on the top here, there's a small tab that you can see here. When you slide this off, it reveals a small port that you could actually connect a SIM card into. Then you could have a 4G network connecting wirelessly to the unit. I'm not gonna personally use that, but it is there. And there are two alternative antennas that you would use and you would connect those here that would connect to that network. Included in the kit is this main wiring harness that has the most connections on the opposite end here. This is gonna be the main connection that's gonna basically plug and play into everything else in my car. You're gonna go ahead and connect this just like so. And then one of the connectors that comes out of this loops back and connects in over to this side. That's for our radio. And then because I want the Bluetooth to work for phone calls, you're gonna take this adapter that says mic on it and it can only fit into one spot. You're gonna connect it into there. It's a small three prong spot. And then the microphone actually connects into the back of that. Next, what we're gonna use is the GPS connection because this unit does have a GPS navigation system. We're going to basically take this antenna here, connect it onto the GPS spot. Kinda of tricky to see, but it's there. There are two USB wires included. So if you want to connect one of those or both, you can. That way you can plug in devices, your phone, whatever, via USB, listen to music. Same thing, this only has one position it can plug into. Then there's another little antenna that we're gonna connect for the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now we've got everything wired up, everything is connected, give you a quick rundown of it. Main wiring harness here has got all of your important things like power, speakers, steering wheel controls, and most importantly, the reverse camera. All right, hold up one second. This is future me cutting in the middle of this clip because I forgot to do one super important thing. And as I mentioned later on, it's a good idea to test things out before you put it all back together. That harness that has a bunch of yellow AV cables on it are actually needed. You need these to use your reverse camera setup. Um, you actually need to plug one end into the head unit here. That yellow cord comes out and plugs into the yellow cord that is labeled cam vid in coming out of the other eye doing harness. That way when you put it into reverse, the reverse cam works. We've got a Wi-Fi antenna here if you wanna watch like YouTube videos or something and you can uh, hotspot from your phone, a Wi-Fi network, that's pretty cool. GPS antenna for navigation, AM, FM, radio. We've got the USB connected here, which runs down to here. You can see this wire is not very long, so if you wanted to have this in your center console, you could. You will just need to get an adapter and an extension. And then we've got the microphone for phone calling, which I'm gonna route that into my dash. Whole bunch of stuff included that you might not need to use, but it's good to have in case. There's a dual USB port. Antennas here if you are running the SIM card on a network. There's an adapter plate here. If you have a 2015 WRX for your heads up display control, you would swap that out. Pretty easy, it just looks like there's a couple screws up there. And then some more audio video cables that we're not going to use. 
and that's it. So now we can take the whole unit, go put it into place in the WRX, connect everything up, and we'll, we'll be ready to go. Lot of wiring but pretty much everything plugs into only one place so just go and connect all of the plugs into where they fit you might have to come over here into the passenger side to finish those top connectors but get it into position and then you can connect the two buttons up at the top now before you push the unit all the way into position you want to test it of course so go ahead and put your key in And it works. That was a really quick boot up as well. So go through all the settings, play around with it, make sure your speakers work. Okay, so once you've tested everything out and everything's working, don't forget your hazard lights, the control for your heads up display, as well as your heating. You can go ahead and push the entire unit back into place. Uh, it just clips in nice and snug. It takes a little bit of convincing and wiggling to get into position. But once it's in there, it's in there snug and it looks pretty flush everywhere. So it's nice. Now it's most likely gonna take you some time to get everything set up and configured to how you want it. You can see here I can swipe across to see the different pages, the different apps. There's so many different things in here and so many different options. That beep that you hear is super annoying. So I'm gonna go into the settings first and foremost and go into the device tab and the sounds and then keypad tone there. I'm gonna turn that off because I can't stand that beeping. Now it's nice and silent. Of course, you'll probably want to get your Bluetooth set up, get your AM, FM radio set up to the stations you want, and then let your navigation kind of do its thing. You can see it's already set up for me. I live in a new area, so it's not even on the map yet, which is kind of funny. Go through the equalizer, set up how you want everything to sound, make sure it sounds good. And then there's just so many different apps to play around with. I'll have some more videos really soon, kind of showing you guys what some of them do. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to get the steering wheel control set up and working. So that way you'll be able to go into when you're listening to music, for example. Hills on Beauty, London must have, London just bought. You can press the steering wheel controls to pause the music, turn the volume up and down, you want it to be. go to the next station. So that's it for the install guys. I would say overall took me about an hour and a half total time. I did take a break halfway through to grab some food, but it was a pretty straightforward install. Everything was nice and simple, plug and play. I would say the hardest thing is getting the OEM unit out because you kind of got to undo those bolts up top and down below. But once you've got everything in place, now it's just getting it set up and customized so that you're used to it. Um, it looks really nice and sleek here. It's definitely a, a big screen. Resolution looks good. Everything looks pretty nice. Stay tuned for my next videos where I show you some of the different settings. I'll give you some more of my feedback and opinions on the unit. And of course, I'll have a link down below in the description if you're interested in checking this out, if you wanna see some more of the specs on it or information about the unit itself. And with that, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. Now, if you have any questions or anything, of course, feel free to leave a comment down below Below and I'll answer it right away. As always guys, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.